This is Eric. How's it going today? I want to give you a, a quick video on what to expect when you're chasing a coolant leak in an 08 Mini Cooper S with a turbocharged engine. Now initially I thought the problem was this coolant reservoir. So I bought one from Rock Auto and then um, I bought this tool it's an air pump with the adapters, and you can pump this thing with pressure. And um, to use it, um, you've got to also buy this uh, BMW adapter. But this is really a good tool to use for finding leaks. So anyways, um, I, I pumped it up before I took it apart. And to my surprise, this thing was good. There was no leaks around it. I thought it was leaking down by the bottom at that connection, but it wasn't. The leak happened to be in three spots. Um, one of them was the water pump, uh, and then the thermostat housing, and then the coolant transfer pipe. And those parts are over here. Um, let's start with this thing. This is the thermostat housing, and it's plastic. It's uh, plastic, and um, you can see where it was leaking at. And um, it's got all these connections to it. This is where the uh, transfer pipe goes. This is a pipe right there. This connects um, like such. The snap ring goes in there to lock it in place. This then goes to the uh, end of the water of the block and it has an o-ring and a flange and both of them were brittle and broke off. And then it passes through the block into the water pump which is also plastic so these things were all leaking um, as a matter of fact this thing I thought was original but it's not it has a date of 2014 so this thing was leaking back in that time so if you've got a Mini Cooper like mine odds are these things are all leaking so uh, anyways to replace it uh, I won't lie. These things are a pain in the ass. The uh, the access is is just horrible to get in there. Um, but you've got to take off the air cleaner and the the tubes. Right here is the air cleaner. It's got one bolt that goes in it somewhere. I think it's uh one of the holes here. It's got two of them, I guess. And then it has. These, uh, these these studs fit into rubber grommets like the one right here. So you've got to unplug this sensor, and this thing comes off. Um, and then you've got to unplug some wires to get this thing out of the way. It actually slides in in this little base. This thing goes over and slides it down. And that uh, the thermostat housing fits right in here. The uh, the coolant transfer pipe goes down this hole back towards the end of the engine. And this wiring harness has one clip that will attach to this thing. So you just pop it off without breaking it. But then the fun begins is how in the hell do you get in here to work on this thing so I thought I had to take off all this stuff I took off the uh, the uh, the air pipe that goes from the inner cooler up and that required taking off this thing loosening it up and I then took off this motor mount to get access and really did have to do that you could almost just leave this stuff on here and work from underneath so underneath though it's still pretty damn tight um, You've got to take off the inner shield, and they're just little plastic clips, but one part of this shield hooks on to um, this stud right here, and the, the shield is actually in between these two. See, so just drop this thing down here, it pops down, and you can pull the, sh the shield out without breaking it. Anyways, getting back into the engine, uh, there you can see the water pump 
and the hole is where that transfer pipe connects. So um, to get to this water pump, you got to take off a pulley, which rides on the water pump. That's the pulley right here. And this has got the damnedest thing. Um, to connect the water pump pulley to the crankshaft, this device uh, is a, a spring-tensioned uh, bracket that rides on this pulley and the crankshaft. And it isn't really that. This, this expands in and out. And when you put this thing on, you can pull this little rip cord out. This comes out of here, pulls out. And it extends this thing in and out. So anyways, uh, it's got three bolts to it. So you take off these three bolts. It comes out and then take off the uh, water pump bolts. That comes off. Then you can get in there and take off the water pump and clean it out. So anyways, one more thing about this thing is the cost. Um, if you have the time... I would suggest buying the parts from Rock Auto because O'Reilly's charged me double of what Rock Auto costs. Um, they have them in stock, which is nice, but if you can plan this thing out, order the thermostat housing, a water pump, the transfer pipe, and also get this belt for the accessories. Mine was, uh, had cracks in it. But uh, anyways, it's not a... It's a Kind of a challenging job. It'll take you to do it. Uh, probably about six hours, but it can be done. And uh, good luck with it. Hey, I uh, just want to add one more thing to this job, which I learned the hard way, and that is um, when you're putting this tube into the engine, uh, I found that if I, if I put this thing in the block first, it would sit too deep. And I couldn't get this water pump to fully seat within this, within this pipe. So um, what I had the best luck with was having the water pump kind of loose down by the block. I put this thing on there and fully insert it and put the snap ring in. And then as you put the water pump against the block, guide this tube here into the block. So try doing that. And the next thing also is um, these thermostat housings have a bleeder screw. So when you're topping off the coolant, loosen this thing up, and as you add coolant, air comes out of here. And then when you see uh, coolant, you can snug it down. Well, the one that I bought, the this is the new bleeder screw, it uh, has undersized threads. So when I would tighten it up, it kept snapping back out so i ended up using the original bleeder screw in the new thermostat housing so be careful of that make sure yours goes in tight and does not strip out